everyone. Hi, I'm Peter Santoscano, and I'm very, very excited that you are all here today for this breakout group telling a new kind of climate story. This will be a very interactive session, meaning there will be multiple opportunities for you to get involved. Uh, you may even want to have a piece of paper or something to write with uh, because um, ideas, fresh ideas, hopefully will pop up into your head. Uh, there will not be time for questions, but I'm really interested in your questions. So we're going to give you some links and, uh, and in those links, there's an email that you can email me your questions directly. There's even a voicemail that you can leave a voicemail. I'm the host of Citizens Climate Radio, and it's possible some of your questions I'll even be able to answer on the show, on our next show. So um, those links are going to pop up in a moment, and you're going to see those. And they, if you didn't catch them at the beginning, they're going to come up again in the middle and at the end. What are your expectations for this workshop? Like I said, it's gonna be interactive, and so you're gonna to wanna to be able to engage uh, in all of that. So thank you so much for coming. I know it's been a long day. Have you stretched? Have you gotten up at any of these breaks? Stretch, how about everyone just do a nice stretch? Oh, that's good, look at you all. You're all, what a beautiful group. This is amazing. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, and we've got a great team, uh, Morgan, Elizabeth, and Mindy and I are gonna run the whole show for you. So with that, uh, in a moment, Morgan's gonna share a poll. There are gonna be two poll questions. I'll tell her when to share it. Um, the first question I'm curious about is, during this coronavirus lockdown, what has been your go-to comfort food? That's gonna be the first question. The second one is gonna ask you about your skills because in telling better climate stories, there are various skills that we can have. By having this poll come out, I get to find out a little bit of who's in the room. You know, you're gonna to have to pick the answer that fits best for you. So like if you see two things, I'm like, I want to choose both, you're gonna to have to choose one, all right? Just kind of you have to do that. So Morgan, can we see our poll? When the poll comes up, just answer the question and then we'll share the results when it's done. Something sweet and carbs are kind of neck and neck here. I'm not surprised. And I'm sure like there are lots of sweet carbs going on. <laughs> well, um, so there's a nice little, you know, breakdown of the things that we've, we've wanted, except, you know, who can eat at a time like this, obviously, well, that one percent of the people, four people asked that, but um, the the big winner here is something sweet, something sweet uh, um, that people have turned to. But you know, there's still like fifty percent or more have gone for something savory. I've been baking bread a lot, but not actually eating it as much. I don't know. Maybe baking it has been enough. But here's the one that's really important to me. Um, which of the following are your strongest skills? All of these are important skills. Speaking uh, is really important, obviously, in telling good stories and writing. But researching is a really important skill. And there's, you know, 88, 89 of you, 27%, uh, that's an important one. Organizing, people don't think of organizing as an important skill to have, but if you're good at organization, um, that's a really important skill to have in telling a climate story or any story because it's about structuring and building relationships. Uh, when you tell a story, if you tell it from your heart, you're going to get closer to a person. Uh, and so good storytelling is about building relationships. So thank you so much for answering the poll. There's gonna be more opportunities for you to get involved. So if you remember nothing else from this presentation, there are two points that I want you to remember. I will repeat them more than once to make sure you remember that. The first one you've heard a million times, whenever you need to, um, whenever you need to, tell a story or speak in front of an audience, they always say, know your audience, right? You've heard this before, right? This is like the number one communication key, know your audience. If you have one climate presentation you give, one climate story that you tell the same time over and over to all kinds of different audiences, I'm suggesting you're not doing it correctly or I'm suggesting there's a better way because based on who your audience is, it's going to change the story you choose to tell and how you tell that story. And so knowing your audience is really good because you can customize, tailor, make your story. You're always going to be honest and sincere, but you're going to say it for that audience. And the number two thing, 
as you're telling climate stories, I want you to tell stories that point to a better future, stories that talk about the impacts of climate solutions and not just the impacts of climate change. Now, you're gonna have the opportunity to now have a thought experiment. Sean Degg, who's a CCL volunteer in New York, he's been doing this thought experiment uh, and we've partnered together and I've made a short film about this. You're gonna see a film that is going to encourage you to engage your imagination. Uh, imagination is unbelievably critical in the climate work we do. So I don't want you to get into your head, but kind of soak this experience in of this video. It's just gonna be three minutes. You may wanna jot down notes. And when it's done, we're gonna give you a chance to share what has come up for you. So engage your imagination and let's take a journey. When we talk about what the future looks like in climate change, we often talk about all the bad things that happen. And that's important, that's an important part of the story, but it's important to think about how the world would just change. And a lot of these are, are good changes and really like think through kind of all of our senses about what that would be like. Just imagine this whole new world. You walk out your front door, what would actually look different? in a world where we've gotten off of fossil fuels. Like as you look around, as you look at homes, what's different about them? How are they different than they are today? What's in your driveway? How's that different? How do you get around? What do you see in the world that you didn't before? And what's missing? And not just what you see, but engage your other senses. What does the world smell like? What smells are missing that were there before? What do you would you smell that you never could before because it was covered over in pollution? What does the world sound like? What does your street sound like? How is that different than it was before? What new things are you hearing in your yard, on your front door, in your neighborhood? You know, what do things feel like, like when you touch them, right? We used to have light bulbs that changing a light bulb would burn your hands and we don't anymore. Just everyday objects in our, in our homes, uh, outside, how do they feel different? How does just walking along the street feel different? And how does that make you feel? What are the things that, that we have gained? What are the things that we have lost? Just imagine this whole new world. Because if we can't imagine this world, we can't create it. So if we can't imagine this world, we can't create it. I hope for you, some fresh things came to your mind. We're gonna give you a chance to share those fresh things. You're gonna go into breakout groups. Uh, we, are, we can have 50 breakout groups and there's about 500 of you. Uh, and so you're gonna have about 10 people in each group. So it will require a certain amount of discipline. When you get in your group, we want you to do a very quick go around where you will say your name and say one thing. One thing you would smell, feel, hear, see in this new world without fossil fuels. And you're gonna do a very quick go around and if everyone goes around and you still have time, we're gonna give you about six minutes. Uh, you can start and do another round and you can share another. So you'll have the instructions in the room. 
in your breakout room. You're gonna say your name, just your name. Say where you're from, that's it, like Peterson from Sunbury. And then one thing short that you see because you wanna give everyone a chance in your room, okay? Is that clear? Nod your heads if, you, if that, that made sense, these instructions. I'm looking at you. Oh, you're so beautiful. Great. All right. So Morgan, could you break us into breakout rooms? Yes. Did you want five or six minutes? Uh, let's do six. Give them some time. All righty. You will be um, sent to your breakout rooms now. Don't worry if you're not seeing all of this. I'm going to uh, share a lot of this on the next episode of Citizens Climate Radio. <laughs> this is lovely. Thank you for sharing um, all of this. And, and imagining a better world is such an important part to the work that we do um, because that's what we're selling. All right. We're not selling a bill. Uh, we're selling a better world. And, uh, and we need to be able to, to communicate that clearly to people. So with that, I want to tell you a climate story. I want to tell you a new kind of climate story. Um, it's not the only climate story I have, but it's, it's one of my climate stories. And it's a, a climate story about a better future, which was always very important to my family. My parents, Pete and Anita Toscano, um, they were immigrants. Their parents were immigrants from Italy. Uh, they grew up in New York City, my mom from Spanish Harlem and my dad in the Bronx. When they got married in the 60s, they were in a cramped apartment in a dirty neighborhood with a lot of crime. And they thought, we need a better life for ourselves and if we have any children. So they started a new, a new life in Stamford, Connecticut. My dad was a welder. Uh, my mom worked at home. Um, that's my sister, Dina, in the bottom. And I'm actually in this photo too. My mom is like three months pregnant with me in this picture. And that time in Connecticut for my mom in particular was the best time of her life. And for all of us, she had all these great friends. There was family nearby. Um, we lived in a small house, but there was always a lot of people there. But sadly for me, my very first memory was not a happy memory. My very first memory when I was three, it was a memory of a lot of fear and terror. It was a memory of suffocating a memory of a lot of confusion and, and noise. It was a memory of, of panicking. And I woke up in this memory in this plastic tent surrounded by strangers. And what was happening, I was having an asthma attack, one of what would become many asthma attacks over the next few years. My mom was nowhere nearby because back then parents couldn't really go into the hospital. Uh, with their kids for a long time. But my mom realized that there was a problem. Our neighborhood was dangerous, not in the ways that, that they had thought about danger, but in a different way because of the air. And as a result, I wasn't growing. I, I was undersized. I couldn't run around and play with my friends. I would always wheeze and have asthma attacks. And, and this was true of a lot of kids in our neighborhood. In my kindergarten class, I was the only white kid in the class. Everyone else was black except for the teacher and me, and almost everybody had asthma. So my mom got specialist, I got weekly shots, but it didn't make any difference. So she finally made a radical step. And one summer she packed my sisters and me into the car and took us up to the mountainside to the Catskills in upstate New York where my grandparents had just moved. And for me, it was a terrible thing at first. It was scary, it was dark, it was weird noises. There were no kids for me to play with. But something extraordinary happened that summer. I got so much better. I got color in my face. I, I gained weight for the first time. I could run around and not start wheezing. And my mom realized that, that we needed to move because as soon as we went back to, to Connecticut that, that fall, I got sick again. So it was hard because this was their support group. My dad had a good job, a union job, and up in the country, there were less opportunities. But my mom was like, we need the best for our kids. We were lucky. We found a community that welcomed us. That's not true of everyone. People get stuck in place. It's not easy for everyone to escape a place where it's dangerous. But for us, we found a new place. And I never again had an asthma attack and I 
today don't suffer with asthma because I was removed from a place where there was bad air. And the reason why I do climate work, there's lots of reasons, but one, I want a world where it is, no matter where you live, if it's in the country, if it's in the city, if it's the suburbs, when you breathe in, you smell clean, fresh air like I smelled that summer in the Catskills. I want a world where kids don't have to miss school because they're sick all the time, where they can live in the neighborhoods, where they can grow and prosper and their families are supported. I want a world that is without fossil fuels. And by putting a price on carbon and by fighting for all these other measures to address climate change, we're gonna make the world a better place. And that's what keeps me going. And that's what I'm excited about. And that's the world I am fighting for. So, in conclusion, in conclusion, there are two things I wanted you to remember. Um, do you remember what they are? I'll remind you. Well, you do you remember. I see. I see nodding. One, remember your audience. Know your audience well and think of a message that's going to really reach them. And you're going to want to share from your heart. Share something of yourself, not just facts and figures. And number two, when you talk about climate change, don't spend time talking about the impacts of climate change. Don't spend a lot of time on that. Instead, talk about the impacts of climate solutions. Because in my case, for instance, even without climate change, it makes sense to, do, to, to stop fossil fuel pollution just to make the world a better place for everyone. It's more just and equitable and better and wonderful for everybody. So here's the radical shift I want you to do though with your storytelling. Up until now, we've been working hard on telling stories to other people, to lawmakers, for instance, to uh, friends, to family members, to some uncle. And we're trying to convince them that this is serious, this is urgent. And sometimes you want to just grab them by the scruff of their shirt and say, wake up. And it's been somewhat effective, but often the stories feel a bit strained and it's been difficult. So this is a shift I want you to make. I want you to tell your story to a new audience. I want you to customize, to research, to organize, to create a story, a moving personal story of climate change for you, for you yourself. I want you to tell yourself a story because the work we do is hard work. It is easy to feel overwhelmed by it. And I need a story, you need a story that will inspire you so that when you're feeling down, you tell yourself what you're fighting for and why. I have a feeling when you have a story that can inspire you, when I hear your story, it's gonna inspire me. And, and if anybody else hears your story, even if they're not interested in climate work, they're gonna get inspired and excited. People get excited by a hopeful future, by fighting for something that is powerful. And before we end, um, Mindy Ayler is gonna share with us just a, a little bit uh, and then I'll do a very quick wrap up. Uh, Mindy is um, involved with CCL. She's been involved for a long time with CCL. And um, Mindy, are you here? I am still here. What did you want to share yeah. about this well, presentation? When we were talking about these in our preparation, it reminded me uh, last uh, November when we were in DC and I was meeting with a staff member in a Republican office. Um, when we came in, he. He said, just to be honest with you, I'm so glad you're here to talk about policy because I don't need to hear any more stories from crying children, you know? And, and I took it in the most genuine way that he meant right. it of, you know, he'd had enough pulling on just his heartstrings and he really wanted to get down to tell me something more about what we can do and what can be, you know, what, what's the positive way we can go with this. Um, and he was just excited to be engaged in what his job was, which was to work on policy. Yeah. 
I think that's true of a lot of lawmakers, right? I mean, that's why they went into it and didn't make a world a better place. And of course, they get back bogged down with their their partisan stuff and all that. But but they they're used to hearing people come and complain <laughs> and talk about how bad things are. But to have someone talk about this is how good things can be. In the chat, thank you, Mindy, so much for that. In the chat are the links again. Please feel free to reach out to me uh, if you want to share that video that Sean Daig made. Uh, feel free to do that. That will be in the chat as well. We'll keep putting that in the chat so you can do that. I want to thank a couple of people in particular, uh, Mindy, uh, Morgan, who's been the technical host, Elizabeth Dell, Brett Cease, Rob Johnson, Ricky Bradley, Sean Dague, and especially Allison Kubisco, who has really done a great job in organizing this entire conference and making it so very powerful. And I want to thank you all for showing up. Um, and hopefully you're not still stuck in a breakout room, uh, but showing up and, uh, and getting involved. Um, do feel free to reach out to me. I uh, look at every email and I will eventually get back to them. And I hope I can share some of what you have in the show. If you've never listened to Citizens Climate Radio before, I'm hoping that this breakout group will give you a sense of what happens on the show where I'm really trying to inspire you in the work that you do, help you become a better communicator, uh, and we even have a puzzler question every month where people can answer that puzzler question and, uh, and I share those answers. So call into the, the, the voicemail line and I'd love to share as much as I can from this, um, from this workshop. Uh, so we've just got a few more moments left, um, barely any, we've got two minutes left actually. Hmm. Two minutes, what do we do with two minutes? I'll look, I'm looking at all the chat. That's what I'm looking at. I guess if you had a quick question, you can throw it into the chat. Hey, Peterson, there was a question quite a while back, um, but I think the question was about um, using a frame. Oh, whoa. Using framing all to talk those, about climate change? Yes. Um, I don't know if you happen to have seen it. I didn't. Let's see. Sorry. It's um, because there were all those... <laughs> <laughs> Great There's a lot answer. going on. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to find it, but how to use, um, you know, would you frame it in the um, context of, um, I think kind of, you, the, he may, you may have answered the question about looking at this beautiful new world. I don't know. Any other thoughts you have about yeah. framing maybe? Well, and, and with that, you know, you want to envision what the world is uh, and then why that's important to you. So for me, I want a world where obviously people can breathe clean air. And why is that important to me? Well, because I couldn't when I was a kid uh, and I had to move a community that really was important to us. So, um, so part of it is that pivot and, and you, know, you kind of figure out what it is that you're, you want and is that something that climate legislation could do potentially or responding to climate change. And then the important part is to tell a compelling story that comes from your heart uh, that reveals your values. It's value-based communication. Uh, and, and that can often connect with people. I'm sure mothers listening to this and parents, you know, they can connect to that. And with that, I believe we're out of time, but I look forward to hearing from all of you and uh, enjoy the closing session. Thank you so much for coming to the presentation today uh, and keep listening to Citizens Climate Radio. Thank you for listening to this episode of Citizens Climate Lobby's training program. You can tune into more episodes anywhere podcasts are available. Inspired by what you heard today? Join Citizens Climate Lobby to advocate for bipartisan climate solutions. Go to community.citizensclimate.org to find more trainings, resources, your local chapter, national action teams, discussion forums, and more. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Citizens Climate. We also invite all of our listeners to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more inspiration. And together, we are creating the political will for a livable world. <laughs>